Welcome to Newsday, reporting live from Singapore. I'm Steve Lai. The headlines. A powerful earthquake strikes Japan, destroying buildings and killing at least four people. Thousands have fled their homes, spending the night in shelters. Israel's Supreme Court strikes down a controversial judicial reform that triggered nationwide protests last year. Migrant boat crossings in the English Channel drop by more than a third but the figures are still some of the highest on record. And stunning images captured by the James Webb Space Telescope have been released two years after it was launched by NASA. Live from our studio in Singapore, this is BBC News. It's Newsday. It's 7 in the morning in Singapore and 8 a.m. in Japan, where we begin this hour. Thousands of people have spent the night in evacuation centers following a powerful earthquake. Four people were killed and dozens injured, with many more thought to be buried under the rubble of buildings. In the past hour, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the UK stands ready to support Japan and is monitoring developments. The epicenter of the 7.6 magnitude quake was Noto province in the center of Japan, with the tremors felt as far away as the capital Tokyo. Tens of thousands of people were told to head to higher ground in the country's first major tsunami warning since 2011. Uh, the warning was later downgraded with waves of less than one meter reported. Saranjana Tawari is in Japan and sent this report. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Let's uh, look at uh, some other stories. We're making the news here in the UK. Uh, police in London have named the 16-year-old boy who was stabbed to death in New Year's Eve as Harry Pittman. He died just before midnight at the top of Primrose Hill. A boy who's also 16 has been arrested on suspicion of murder. Police are appealing for witnesses or anyone who, with information to come forward. Police have launched a murder inquiry after a 38-year-old man was shot dead in Edinburgh last night. Officers were called to the scene in the Granton area just before midnight after a gun was fired in what's believed to be a targeted incident. Another man was seriously injured and is in hospital in a serious but stable condition. Almost 3 million people were seen for an urgent cancer check over the last 12 months, according to new analysis from NHS England. The number being tested has increased by more than a quarter compared with the same period before the pandemic. You're live with BBC News. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has pledged to intensify attacks on Ukraine after an escalation of deadly attacks by both sides in recent days. The Russian-installed authorities in Donetsk say Ukrainian shelling has killed Four people there. Meanwhile, Ukraine says one person was killed in the port area of Odessa after Russia launched 90 attack drones last night, most of which were destroyed by the country's air defense systems. We spoke to the locals in Odessa, Kharkiv, and occupied Crimea about what they've witnessed. Olga Molchevska reports. I look forward to seeing that. In the meantime, you've been watching Newsday. Uh, do stay with us here on BBC News. I'll be back in half an hour with more. Bye for now.
Welcome to Newsday, reporting live from, from Singapore. I'm Steve Lai. The headlines. A powerful earthquake strikes Japan, destroying buildings and killing at least six people. Thousands have fled their homes, spending the night in shelters. Israel's Supreme Court strikes down a controversial judicial reform that triggered nationwide protests last year. Migrant boat crossings in the English Channel drop by more than a third, but the figures are still some of the highest on record. And stunning images captured by the James Webb Space Telescope have been released two years after it was launched by NASA. Live from our studio in Singapore, this is BBC News. It's Newsday. It's 8 in the morning in Singapore and 9 a.m. in Japan, where we begin this hour. Thousands of people have spent the night in evacuation centers following a powerful earthquake. Six people are killed and dozens injured, with many more thought to be buried under the rubble of buildings. In the past hour, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the UK stands ready to support a Japan and is monitoring developments. The epicenter of the 7.6 magnitude quake was a Noto province in the center of Japan, with the tremors felt as far away as the capital Tokyo. Tens of thousands of people were told to head to higher ground in the country's first major tsunami warning since 2011. The warning was later downgraded, with waves of less than one meter reported. Saranjana Tiwari is in Japan and sent this report. Our home editor Mark Easton with that report. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Let's uh, look at some other stories making news in the UK. Police in London have named the 16-year-old boy who was stabbed to death on New Year's Eve as Harry Pittman. He died just before midnight at the top of Primrose Hill. A boy who's also 16 has been arrested on suspicion of murder. Police are appealing for witnesses or anyone who, with information, to come forward. Police have launched a murder inquiry after a 38-year-old man was shot dead in Edinburgh last night. Officers were called to the scene in the Granton area just before midnight after a gun was fired in what's believed to be a targeted incident. Another man was seriously injured and is in hospital in a serious but stable condition. Almost 3 million people were seen for an urgent cancer check over the last 12 months. That's according to new analysis from NHS England. The number being tested has increased by more than a quarter compared with the same period before the pandemic. You're live with BBC News. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has pledged to intensify attacks on Ukraine after an escalation of deadly attacks by both sides in recent days. The Russian-installed authorities in Donetsk say Ukrainian shelling has killed four people there. Meanwhile, Ukraine says one person was killed in the port area of Odessa after Russia launched a 90 attack drones last night, most of which were destroyed by the country's air defense systems. We spoke to locals in Odessa, Kharkiv and occupied Crimea about what they've witnessed. Olga Machelska reports. That's all for now. Stay with BBC News. Welcome to Newsday, reporting live from Singapore, I'm Steve Lai. The headlines. A powerful earthquake strikes Japan, destroying buildings and killing at least six people. Thousands have fled their homes, spending the night in shelters. Israel's Supreme Court strikes down a controversial judicial reform that triggered nationwide protests last year. The Israeli military signals a shift in tactics in Gaza and says it expects the conflict will continue throughout 2024. 
and migrant boat crossings in the English Channel dropped by more than a third, but the figures are still some of the highest on record. Live from our studio in Singapore, this is BBC News. It's Newsday. Hello and welcome to the program. We begin in Japan, where thousands of people have spent the night in evacuation centers following a powerful earthquake. Local police say six people were killed and dozens injured, with many more thought to be buried under the rubble of buildings. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says help is on its way, but rescuers face many difficulties due to damaged roads. The epicenter of the 7.6 magnitude quake was Noto Province in the center of Japan, with the tremors felt as far away as the capital Tokyo. Tens of thousands of people were told to head to higher ground in the country's first major tsunami warning since 2011. The warning was later downgraded with waves of less than one meter reported. Suranjana Tawari is in Japan and sent this report. To the ongoing war in Gaza now and concerns are mounting that the conflict could draw in other regional players. The British Defense Secretary Grant Shapps says Britain is considering direct military action against Houthi rebels in Yemen if they continue to attack commercial shipping in the Red Sea. The UK has already deployed a warship to protect against the Iran-backed militants who've declared their support for Hamas and have launched more than 100 drone and missile strikes against ships traveling to Israel. Amid these rising tensions in the Red Sea, a flotilla of Iranian warships are reported to have sailed through the area. Iranian media said the country's warships have been operating in open waters to secure shipping routes, combat piracy and carry out other tasks since 2009. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. You're live with BBC News. In the UK, migration is likely to feature as a key issue in the general election that's expected later this year. The number of migrants crossing the English Channel in small boats from France fell by more than one third in 2023 compared with the year before. But more than 29,000 people did make the journey. Our home editor, Mark Easton, has more details. And before we go, let's revisit our top story. Thousands of people in Japan have spent the night in evacuation centers following a powerful earthquake. Six people were killed and dozens injured. We take you to some live pictures now of Fumio Kishida. He is giving a live uh, news conference as we speak and has said help is on its way, but rescuers face many difficulties due to damaged roads. This is a story that we'll be monitoring throughout the day, the latest lines out of his news conference and as well, and you can go to our website for those updates. You can find them at bbc.com slash news. Bye for now. Hello there. We've got some very strong winds and some heavy rain on the way for Tuesday that brings with the risk of some.